how to evaluate. Why do we need to evaluate? Because people want to know what they've done well and what they need to improve on. They'll lose motivation and direction if they fail to receive feedback about their work. But can we just tell people what they've done poorly? Nope. In fact, Dr. Copperson found in her research that none of her subjects like negative feedback, and nobody found it to be an inspiration for learning and growth. That's why it's so important to learn to give useful feedback to others. What makes up useful feedback? The good points and the areas for improvement. Good points are the things that are done properly. The areas for improvement are things that need to be strengthened. Then the question is, how much for each kind of feedback? A, 70, 30, B, 60, 40, or C, 50, 50? And the answer is D, 80, 20. 80% 80 for good things and 20% for areas for improvement. What? Yes, you just heard it. I said 80% of the feedback should be given to areas done well and only 20% to areas for improvement. Wait a minute here. But isn't evaluation about the weaknesses? So how come so little is given on the areas that need to be strengthened? Hey, don't you remember what Dr. Copperson said? Nobody likes negative feedback, even for people that are eager to learn. Because no matter how objective the evaluation may sound, the person being evaluated is a human being with pride and fears. Focus on the things that are done well. This helps the person being evaluated to feel appreciated and valued. Everybody needs reassurance that they've done a good job before they become receptive to hearing about their weaknesses. It's only when people feel accepted that they are ready for suggestions to improve on their weaknesses. Focus on maximum two areas for improvement, because people's attention span is short. Giving more than that runs the risk of in one ear, out the other. Show rather than tell what and how to improve. The best evaluators are people who can walk the talk and demonstrate that they're knowledgeable in those areas. Give specific details about what has been done well, demonstrate with examples, maybe even in steps, how to make changes to help people understand and implement those suggestions in the future. Use the sandwich approach when giving verbal feedback. Start with the good things that are done properly, followed by useful suggestions for improvement. Give at most two suggestions for improvement, show rather than tell. Demonstrate with examples or explain in steps. And on a positive note to encourage the person to try out your suggestions in the future. The most important thing about giving evaluations is the evaluator's attitude. Use such words like appear, seem, perhaps, may, maybe, consider, try, or wish to soften your tone when giving suggestions for improvement. Show that you care. How you say it is often more important than what you say. Remember, the purpose of any evaluation is for people to do a better job next time. So be kind, be sincere, be helpful. Because even toddlers know whether someone is friendly or hostile by their facial expressions and tone of voice. Be precise and concise. Stay focused and express appreciation for the person being evaluated because people are willing to improve when they feel accepted. Love creates miracles. Still doubtful? Check out how Toastmasters make great improvements in public speaking through instant positive feedback.